Welcome back. We're now going to have a look at the Davison Germa or Germa experiment, which was um, intended to try and prove or show evidence for is a better way of saying it for the De Broglie matter wave conjecture. So as we know, De Broglie um, comes up with a way of looking at the Bohr model. Now the Bohr model is a particulate model where an electron um, as a particle is in orbit around a nucleus here and electrons can transition between different energy states um, that's the lowest n equals one and two there and you need the exact amount of energy in this case here it's 3.4 electron volts to transition between um, uh, orbits one and two the problem with the, um, the, the Bohr model is that it doesn't give any indication or doesn't give any explanation to why the electron cannot be found in between these orbits. And as we know, the de Broglie model is that we have wavelengths um, and each of the orbits is made up of a wavelength of a particle. In this case, it's the wavelength of the electron. So if we're in the fifth orbit out here, n equals five, there are five um, uh, wavelengths of the electron that make up this wave. And as a result, it becomes a standing wave. The problem with this model is it did not have experimental evidence. It only had mathematical, um, mathematical derivation. So it was to, um, to Davison and Germer, or Davison and Germer, as you'll find two different pronunciations on the internet, um, to come up with a experiment that tries to show whether or not um, does the electron exhibit particle only or does it have a wave nature. So here is a model of this experiment. We have a crystal up here, a crystal lattice, where the um, atoms of this crystal lattice, um, they could be nickel atoms, are arranged and here they're in a nice um, uh, even arrangement. Down here we have an electron gun and the electron gun liberates electrons by thermionic emission. Basically that is just a electron beam and this electron beam is going to be fired into or onto the, um, the crystal. So let's have a look at that as we do it. Okay, so here is the electron beam being fired onto the nickel um, crystal up here. And what we can do is we can use a, um, a, a um, galvano yeah, galvanometer and the galvanometer can measure the, um, the voltage that, uh, or the current of the electrons that it can actually produce. So if I put the galvanometer um, here, um, I will get a large current. In other words, I get scattered electrons back, okay? Um, so I would measure a, a frequency, uh, sorry, a, um, a maximum here, okay? So if I was to have a look at the plot, as I move this around, you can see that we have minimums and maximums, minimums and maximums. Now, if the electrons are scattering as a particle, we shouldn't get minimums and maximums. We should just get a random amount of scattering. But here is definitely an interference pattern. We have constructive interference in this point here, and we have destructive interference here. And this is shown in these uh, in the plot over here, the intensity plot, as troughs and crests. So this is constructive interference, and this is destructive interference here. Okay. Um, we can change the amount of interference by simply changing the um, electron gun controls, in other words, the intensity. Um, so if I make the electron beam slightly brighter, I get just larger um, amounts of uh, in maximums and minimums. Now, if it was, once again, as I said, if this was a particle beam, okay, it was only, as we know, it is a particle beam, but if it only exhibits particle nature, then the electron would own, would have a, just a random scattering. This would be a constant value, okay? 
Um, but we don't get that. We get an interference pattern. And interference patterns are evidence of wave nature. So this is the um, davison germa experiment, which shows us then because of the interference patterns, the, um, the maximum and the minimums, um, that the electrons are exhibiting wave nature. Therefore, they have a wavelength. Okay, thank you.